Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. And I would like to thank the organizer first for inviting me to speak today about my research with Chism circulating micronates as biomarkers to track cardiovascular disease. Um, here are my disclosure, which are known. And today we talk about some um, effects of anthracyclines, uh, which are an important class of chemotherapy drugs. They are used against uh, several kinds of cancers, and they work by uh, different mechanisms um, of action. Um, this mechanism uh, results uh, in two principal outcomes, which is uh, uh, cell growth inhibition and apoptosis induction, which are very important against uh, highly proliferating cells uh, like cancer cells. So obviously, the main effect is to um, fight cancer and so increase the life expectancy of uh, subjects with cancer. Um, the main problem is that there is also a bad side to that, which is cardiotoxicity. So many mm, subjects with cancer which are treated, they survive cancer, but uh, they suffer from uh, cardiac disease. Uh, what exactly is cardiotoxicity? Um, there is no uh, single definition, but uh, the main feature is that there is a reduction in the function of the heart, which is usually measured as a left ventricular ejection fraction. So in the end, what they suffer, the subject suffer is functional impairment. Uh, there are different forms of cardiotoxicity. One is uh, less severe, meaning that um, when the subjects suffer from acute cardiotoxicity, they usually have no later problems. But the problem is when they suffer from cardiotoxicity uh, within one year or later than one year after the end of the treatment. In this case, uh, they can have uh, several in acute problem. Um, how is uh, an anthracycline induced cardiotoxicity um, detected? Uh, well, this is it is detected by echocardiography. Uh, the subjects are monitored um, through their uh, treatment by echocardiography, and when uh, cardiotoxicity is present, they present uh, a dysfunction. Uh, so this is uh, something which is happening after the um, dysfunction onset. I'm really sorry. Okay, again. Okay. Um, how is um, cardiotoxicity detected? The, the detection of cardiotoxicity uh, is obtained by echocardiography. Uh, this is something which is uh, due to the monitoring of the subjects uh, during or after the anthracycline treatment. And when uh, there is a problem with um, the, of dysfunction and, and uh, cardiac functionality, uh, there is uh, uh, mm, the detection of cardiotoxicity. But this is something which is um, possible to know only when the cardiotoxicity and dysfunction is present. Of course, there are some markers that are used actually, but which are not optimal. The best one is cardiac toponin. Uh, cardiac toponin is a protein which is present in the heart, uh, the whole heart and functional heart. Uh, when there is cardiac damage, troponin is released into the blood. So in this case, if the subject treated with anthracyclines have no presence of troponin, so no troponin increase, we know that the, uh, they are okay. They do not require uh, cardiac monitoring and they have a low risk of uh, problems. Uh, the problem is when there is a positive increase of troponin in the blood. So in this case, we know that these subjects are at risk of, um, sorry, cardiotoxicity. Uh, but the problem is that, that we do not know when and how much uh, there will be an impact of, on their life and um, cardiac function. So uh, the predicted value is low. So we thought about microRNAs, which are uh, small non-coding RNAs. Uh, they are um, transcribed into the nucleus of every cell of our body. 
uh, there is a long transcript uh, which is present in the nucleus. Then the, the transcript is processed and cut uh, and it goes to the cytoplasm uh, when there is another processing and the, the end uh, product is a small 21 to 23 nucleotides, a single strand RNA, which is then bound to a protein complex called RISC, which is the active player uh, in the function of microRNAs inside the cells. But, but we were speaking about circulating microRNAs. Uh, so in this case, the microRNAs, uh, they go outside the cell. They can be found in plasma and in other human uh, fluids bound to proteins or inside vesicles. Um, they're very stable because they are protected from nucleases and they have been proposed as biomarkers of several diseases. So we decided to uh, investigate and research whether they could be used as biomarkers of anthracycline induced cardiac damage. And that was the aim of our research, so to investigate their role in um, cardiotoxicity. And here is our experimental design. We collected samples from 88 breast cancer subjects. Uh, these subjects were evaluated for cardiac function uh, before the treatment with either doxorubicin or epirubicin, which are two anthracyclines. And we obtained also um, blood samples. Uh, then the subjects were monitored and treated with doxorubicin and again, um, we obtained uh, samples mm, during the treatment and after the treatment. Yeah. So we have three time points, uh, T0, which is the baseline before the treatment, T1 during the treatment, and one month after the treatment, and the follow-up, which is three to uh, 12 months after the last infusion of doxorubicin. So the aim was the identification of circulating markers uh, of cardiotoxicity. Unfortunately for us, not for the subjects, um, no cardiotoxicity was detectable. So the subjects suffered no problems of cardiac function. So we had to do some rearrangement of our research, research and we aim to the identification of circulating microRNAs as predictive markers of cardiac damage. Uh, the experimental design is similar, but in this case, we decided to divide the subjects into groups uh, basing on the presence or absence of an increase of troponin levels uh, in their blood. And of course, they were also divided uh, on the base of treatment, uh, either doxorubicin or epirubicin. So we had four groups, and then I'm showing you some uh, methods uh, for each sam sample, uh, plasma sample obtained from uh, the subjects. Uh, we did an RNA extraction uh, followed by microRNA retrotranscription, which is in a universal retrotranscription. Every microRNA is retrotranscribed at the same time in the same, um, in the same tube for each uh, sample followed by uh, an open array based screening. Uh, in this case, this is a QRT-PCR based screening. Uh, we had an open array in which we spotted uh, more than 100 different microRNAs, which are heart-related micro, uh, microRNAs, uh, selected on the basis of the literature and on our experience. Uh, on circulating microRNAs related to cardiovascular disease. Uh, the screening was conducted at baseline, so before any kind of treatment in the case of the subject uh, on six samples from each of the four groups. Uh, then the results of the screening were analyzed and uh, we identified microRNAs of interest uh, which were validated on all samples of each group. Um, the principal results of the design were um, on that we came up with three microRNAs which were upregulated uh, only in patients treated with uh, lately, later treated with uh, doxorubicin, so microRNA 122, 499, and 885, 5P. So we had results only in the doxorubicin group because unfortunately no epirubicin associated microRNAs were identified. Uh, we didn't give up uh, and we went on uh, working on the doxorubicin group 
of course, the following step uh, was to um, look at uh, the behavior of these microRNAs uh, in the different endpoints after baseline, and we didn't see any difference in the expression of these microRNAs uh, at later time points. So we focused on the baseline, which was our interest, and we posed a question whether we could be able to identify um, those patients um, with high risk of cardiotoxicity. So to separate based on the expression of these three microRNAs, the patients with or without an increase um, in troponin. And uh, we came up with a, um, encouraging results, as you can see by clustering analysis and rock cube analysis, uh, we had a good, a good accuracy uh, using the cluster of microRNAs identified by us to separate uh, uh, confidently this uh, this patient. So we came up with a possible algorithm for future studies, which um, could be the proposal for future clinical applications. Uh, um, in this case, there are breast cancer subjects with indication from the, um, for treatment with anthracyclines. Uh, there are different anthracyclines, as I said before. So the clinician have to select one particular anthracycline, and we propose they do a uh, plasma microRNA analysis, uh, which indicates whether there is a potential risk for these patients for a certain um, selected anthracycline. And in the case of a potential high risk, the clinicians uh, could revisit their options and select another uh, kind of drug. Uh, uh, of course, in the case of no indicated potential um, cardiotoxicity risk uh, indicated by the microRNAs, the treatment could continuous plan. So this is what we propose uh, to do in the future after our hopefully um, successful investigations. But we don't um, limit it. Uh, we didn't limit our investigation only to uh, the, the human um, the humans, uh, we also tested an animal models of doxorubicin. This is a, a quite a um, useful model uh, in which we took some mice. We treated the mice with doxorubicin for two weeks. And, uh, and then we collected plasma in this case, because it was a study gain uh, on circulating microRNAs. And we collected plasma and investigated cardiac function um, at the end of the, the treatment, which is um, after 14 days, the T14. And then also one week and one month later than the end of the uh, treatment of the mice, so T21 and T42. And um, I don't know if it's uh, quite clear. These are, um, this is a picture depicting um, the cardiac function of the uh, three groups we identified. So um, we identified three groups of mice, uh, treated and untreated. And uh, some of the mice uh, um, evidenced some real problems. So these are the red box. Uh, so there was a decrease in the function of the heart. And so we uh, again try to determine um, whether we could uh, see differences uh, um, using unsupervised analysis. So at baseline, the mice are all the same if we analyze them on the basis of their cardiac function. But then at T42, uh, we see that the mice um, are not all the same. There is a group of mice presenting cardiac dysfunction, which is separated from uh, the other mice either untreated or treated with doxorubicin. So there is a differential response to the drug. And then we analyzed uh, these mice. So we took the plasma from all the mice. And again, we did total RNA extraction and uh, open array analysis. And, and to cut a long story short, we identified eight microRNAs presenting um, different regulation uh, upon um, treatment and the um, cardiac dysfunction. And so these are the results from the three groups. And in particular, we identified uh, four microRNAs, which again, we used to try to, uh, to see whether they could identify uh, the mice presenting cardiac problems um, between uh, in the treated group. So again, this is a presentation of the um, 3D clustering. Uh, you can see that by using the expression of uh, restricted cluster of microRNAs, we can separate completely uh, the mice treated with doxorubicin 
uh, when they are they are affected, which are the red um, the red dots. So these are mice affected with cardiac dysfunction and not affected. So treated with doxorubicin, but not affected uh, in their cardiac function. We also try to see whether this microRNAs uh, um, indicated some problem and some separation in the um, this, in these mice uh, based on their cardiac function, but we didn't find anything which was particularly useful. Um, of course, uh, and, and while closing my presentation, I have to say some limitation of our study. So known, uh, in particular, as I said, none of the subjects to be evaluated at any sign of cardiac toxicity. Uh, so this is a work for the future. And cardiac troponin was evaluated using different methods because it was uh, a multicenter study. So the, we were not able to correlate uh, troponin expression with microRNA expression. Uh, and of course, another limitation is the limited number of microRNAs evaluated. And uh, also, the animal models must be refined. This is a very uh, used, quite used animal models, but the mice uh, do not have cancer. So it is not really mimicking um, the, the, the human situation 100%. But we have future plans, of course, for other research. So we would like to further evaluate uh, other subjects, or human subjects, to identify new microRNAs, uh, which we would like to uh, analyze by next generation sequencing um, in order to um, look at many, many microRNAs, as many as possible. And one thing that would be useful would be an analysis in young subjects uh, uh, suffering from cancer, which have a long um, expected um, life, so we would like to follow them in time. But in conclusion, we demonstrated that circulating microRNAs are indeed good candidates as biomarkers uh, to be associated with cardiotoxicity and to prevent cardiotoxicity with possible future applications. So we uh, will go on with our translational studies. Okay, uh, in the end, I would like to thank all the people participating to this, pro uh, to this project, uh, in particular the Monzino group uh, with Sonia, Mattia, Veronica, Chiara, and my, um, the head of my lab, Voltero Colombo, Daniela Cardinale, who was uh, really, really a key person and for the, the, the recruitment of the subject, so, so Maria Teresa Sandri and Roberto Latini and Serge Masson. Of course, I have to also acknowledge the funding agency, uh, Ministero Salute, and I would like to thank everybody for your attention. Thank you.